Hello everyone, welcome back to Unrest. So we return to Tanya, a young woman who's about to go into an arranged marriage. We're in the farmlands, as you can see here, outside of the main city. And my parents want to speak to me, so let's go have a chat. Tanya, there you are. We've got good news. Wonderful news. I know you weren't really looking forward to this day, but... I think we've done as well as any parents could. Father, I'm 15. You can just get to the point. We've arranged for you to marry Hanu, the merchant caste boy. If all goes well, and Hanu comes into his heritage, you will one day be a merchant's wife. Hmm. Huh. Well, um, I guess I won't want for money, most likely. Hmm. Everyone in this village knows Hanu is a stupid, foul-tempered cretin. Or cretin? Is it cretin? Cretin? Not sure. Why did it have to be him? Oh god, I hope that's not true. Can you just imagine how miserable that'd be to be forced into a marriage? Not just forced into a marriage, but forced into a marriage with someone who's a piece of shit. Like, really, that would be... Oh. Terrible. Okay, but if I'm... I mean, I'm obviously relatively lowborn, so why would they do this? The family agree to marry their son to a peasant? And everyone's happy about this? The family is quite happy. We'll say no more about it. Hmm. Sounds like some backroom dealings. That's suspicious. We arrange things with the parents today. We'll be taking our dowry out of Laxmi's vaults and presenting it tomorrow. Between now and then, we'd like you to go to Hanu and talk things over with him. Tell me when you've done this, so we can arrange everything else. Tanya, I know you're ready for this, and I just wanted to say I'm proud of you. I've never regretted having you as a daughter, never for a moment. Always remember that everything we've done, we've done for you. Yay! An arranged marriage! Uh, how old is Tanya again, by the way? Uh, 15? Yeah, she's 15. 15 years old. Forced into a marriage. You know, it's easy to, like, I really just want to say... Screw you to the parents, you know? Like, why are you doing that to your daughter? I want to say it's wrong, but... Given the situation? Is it? I mean, maybe if... Maybe if she doesn't get married and she lives the life of a peasant, maybe she'll... I don't know. I'm not quite sure how hard life is, but maybe she could starve or something, and she has a, a good, probably wealthy husband who is a merchant. Well, maybe she'd have a long and happy life. I don't know. I certainly don't like arranged marriages, though. But given the situation, you know, it's, it's just not that black and white. Okay, let's take a look around. Nita. Juhai, Uncle Naga Merchant. And, oh, there's Hanu. Okay, he's very, very far away. So let's take a look at some things. Let's see what I have on me. Old wooden elephant. An old toy, hand-carved by your father, and perceptibly cruder than his newest ones. Okay. Guess it's a cherished kind of family gift. I have three monies, which I'm assuming is not very much. Earrings. Some relatively nice earrings. A preemptive wedding gift from your aunt and uncle. Handful of royal coins. Coins can circulate around a village for decades. This handful predates the regicide. Icon of Banka Mundi. An old battered icon of Banka Mundi, protector of livestock. Hmm. Protector of livestock, obviously very important for a uh, farming place like this. 
Yeah, there's an incredible amount of detail in here, actually. If you just look at everything, I mean, you can look at... Uh, not just quests, which tells you what to do, but there's also... You can look at uh, descriptions for basically everybody you can talk to. And locations, and even a bit of history. So let's look at the history for the village. Most of what you know is gossip and rumor. The village and surrounding farms belonged to Laxmi's husband until his death from illness. It should have gone to his family, but instead, it went to her, and she's ruled it with a steady hand and a sharp lack of tolerance ever since. Travelers from the city have told you that she's been a member of its ruling council ever since the king and queen died, and from the way she embarks out every so often, she seems to be overseeing many farms besides this one. Well, my experience with Laxmi is very negative so far, when I talk to her as the Naga. Wouldn't surprise me if she's rather corrupt. Hmm. Alright, the city. You have little idea what's going on in the city. You've heard that some sort of ruling council replaced the king and queen when they died a year back. The poor and starving are being saved by a priest named Ranvir and that the Naga are to blame for a lot of the troubles the city's going through. <laughs> Ranvir saving them, sure. I don't know if Ranvir's the one that killed uh, the Naga, and uh, the king and queen, but even if he didn't directly order it, he certainly incited it. Yeah, there's an incredible amount of detail here. I don't want to look at everything, at least not yet, but let's see if there's anything of particular interest. History versus just the location, let's see. Hmm, from the sounds of it, the city is overrun with disease, evil naga, and slum-dwelling thugs and murderers, and the other farms are in revolt. I keep saying revolt. 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 Gotta get that into my head, it's pronounced revolt. Okay. The other farms are in revolt, but not this one. Hmm. Laxmi's estate. Ooh, this should be important. No peasant is allowed on Laxmi's estate unless they have specific instructions to go there, or they're being tried and punished. Laxmi sounds like a very unpleasant person. I mean, I already know she kind of is, but dear God. Like, I'm just imagining her, imagining her as some sort of a mythical demon who likes eat, eats the hearts of children or something. She's probably not that bad. Um, let's see. Let's look at Hanu. The son of the town's merchant cast a denizen. You avoid him, and he avoids most of the villagers. But you've heard he's surly and prone to aggressive outbursts. Oh god, I don't want him as a freaking husband. Sounds like a douchebag. What about the parents? Merchant cast couple, they keep mostly to themselves, the father is loud, and you've never once heard the mother speak. Ugh. That does not bode well. Alright, let's talk to everybody except Hanu first. Nita. Who? Oh, actually, let's look at our traits. Tanya is a gifted, rational thinker. She is also literate. Unusual for a peasant. Only child? Tanya grew up without any siblings. There have been times in her life when she felt strangely alone. And loner? Never had many friends. Juhai is one of the few people Tanya has ever truly... has ever been truly comfortable around. Calm. If Tanya thinks the most advisable course of action is to be peaceful, she will try to be peaceful. Okay, so who is Nita? A friend of your mother. In another life, she could have been a member of any ruling council in the world. In this one, she runs her household with astounding finesse and energy. So I heard your parents managed to get you betrothed to Hanu. Congratulations, Tanya. You really deserve this. You really deserve this. Well, if he is a dick, as he sounds like, as it sounds like he is, then 
Well, I don't think I do deserve this because it's more of a burden than anything. Well, I don't know about that. I haven't spoken to him. What's that supposed to mean? Hanu's not just a husband, he's a hand up into the next cast. He's your way out of a lifetime of hard work and starvation. If my parents had gotten me a marriage like that, I would have never stopped smiling. Yeah, it didn't even occur to her to, to question it. Whoa, if you'd married Hanu, your current husband wouldn't have stopped smiling either. I'm not quite sure what that means, but that sounds like a grave insult. Is she saying that Nita's a terrible wife? Or what? That doesn't sound good. <laughs> that really doesn't sound good. I'm not ungrateful, I'm just cautious. Well, you're not grateful enough, that's for sure. This marriage is the greatest gift you'll ever get. Jesus, that's depressing. A forced, uh, arranged marriage. With a person who's apparently not very good. Is the greatest gift I'll ever get. That's depressing as hell. Just think about that. Damn. Let's take a look around the fields. Hmm. I really like the art. It's very smooth, very... Mm, what would be the word? Painterly? You know, there's no, like, uh, sharp lines or anything like that. Just everything's very smooth, very peaceful. Very colorful. Okay. So there's two ways out of here. I can go down or right. Uh, looks like there's nobody below me, but let's let's see who's down here. Yeah, there's nobody listed on the map, but there are a bunch of villagers. Hello? My husband's been unbearable. All he does is complain about the food short sort Yeah, let's try that again. All he does is complain about the food shortages, as if we weren't all hungry. Even the children are handling things better than him. He sounds like a whiner. Oh, he doesn't even have anything to say. Maybe if I keep trying to talk to him, he'll answer back. No. Things have been fine, Tanya. My family is fine. Thanks for asking. If by fine you mean on the brink of starvation, then sure. Everything's fine. Everything's alright. Apparently there's no one I can talk to here. Whoa, look at that peacock! It's so pretty! <gasps> Come here! Move along, girl. Laxmi's back and she won't be disturbed. Oh shit, this is Laxmi's place! Oh crap, I skipped that. I don't know what that said. But the... 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 the, the peacock! But... I... Can, can I just touch it, please? Can, can I touch it? I'll be gone in five seconds, I promise. Please? Please? Okay. Well, Laxmi's a piece of shit, so... Uh, let's not get stabbed in the gut with a spear. Juhai. Oh, you're right. You're my uh, pretty much my only friend, right? Just about the only person you really look forward to seeing. And the only other girl you know who hasn't really been looking forward to being betrothed. Hey, guess who's done with her chores? And guess who's wearing her I just watched a baby elephant die face? You okay? Uh, I just watched a baby elephant die. I guess that'd be my face. That would be really depressing actually to watch a baby elephant die. Baby elephants are cute. They're adorable. Although even baby elephants are actually kind of huge. Like, you could almost ride them. What would happen if you tried to ride a baby elephant? Well, the mother would probably kill you. Hmm. 
Anyway, uh, I guess that's besides the point, isn't it? Let's see. My family's engaged me to Hanu. What? Are you serious? I mean... I guess you should go talk with him, right? That's what your mother is going to tell you to do? Okay, just talk to me after, okay? Please? Okay, you got it. <laughs> this villager here. <laughs> it looks like he just bumped his knee against something and he's nursing the wound. And then you know what I thought about? I thought about that scene from Family Guy. Yep. Every time I look at him, I'm just gonna think about that. Stables. Oh, is that, uh, what does that thing mean? It's a location? Inside are the strongest, fastest horses in Bahimra. You've never ridden a horse before. Hmm. The very fact that this is here implies that I'm going to get to use this at some point. That could be fun. Ride a little horsey. Mandeep. That's a cool name. Who are you? Hold on, I'm gonna guess that you're... Um... The doctor? The village doctor, yes! Which is to say, Laxmi is a doctor. He's absolutely never spoken to a peasant unless he has to, but in his dealings with his social equals and superiors, he seems perfectly laid back and genial. All of a sudden, I hate you. Okay. Never spoken to a peasant unless he's had to. Let's see if he speaks to me. Mandeep glances at you dismissively over a leaf of parchment he's holding, then returns to his work. He has contempt for me. Well. You know, I wonder... Are the peasants even allowed inside of the city? Let's see. What are you doing? No going to the city for peasants. Behemoth's starving. Go grow something, you lazy rat. Jesus. Alright, that's how much respect peasants get. You know, you would think... If people are starving, and the people you rely upon for food are the farmers, that you treat them with some fucking respect. Treating the very people who are supplying the food that you need to survive with contempt is just... Not only is it wrong, it's just dumb. It's incredibly dumb. Why would you do that? Hello! You look familiar. The Naga's cart. Anything put on here will be gone forever within a few hours. It's doubtful you could take anything back from it without the Naga noticing. Hmm. Did... I wonder if I can steal food or something at some point. Uh, see if the Naga merchant shows up in the journal. Yes. The merchant comes for a bri for a very brief jaunt every once in a great while. No one you know has ever spoken with it. Hmm. I wonder if this journal is, like, uh, written from her perspective. The reason I say that is because... The description calls the Naga merchant an it which seems very disrespectful. And of course she's only heard bad things about the Nagas, so she probably doesn't respect them. Eh?
Anything I can help you with? You seem to be waiting for something. I am early. I'm always early to my appointment with Laxmi, and every time I stand outside waiting, I'm left alone. None of you people ever come near me. I wonder why. Well, one reason is because you say you people, racist. Actually, no, we're the bigots, sorry. Um. We're afraid of you. Sorry. Tell me, what do you think I'm capable of? If I were to tear you apart right where you stood, how long would I last against your village, your guards? And if I made it back to the city with human blood on my hands, how long before I was torn apart and sold to the markets in pieces? I didn't say it made any sense. Sorry. The thing about humans is that you love warriors for your leaders. The king and queen weren't warriors. They talked trade, peace, negotiations. The poorest and hungriest didn't want to hear that. They wanted murderers. Is this about politics? We don't hear much about the city out here. The slums had a gang leader, Jadeep. His men were killers and enforcers. Now the slums have made his gang a militia. He reports to another murderer, Ranvir, a priest who wants the innocent Naga refugees in the slums butchered. If you want to see real human leaders, look to them. You know, I've heard rumors about how Laxmi's husband died. Lately, it seems I'm learning more about humans than I ever wanted to. Uh, was there anything you wanted? I've nothing much to sell you. Most of what's on my cart is for Laxmi. Let's see. Whoa, I'm just gonna come out and ask. I want to take my chances in the city. Can you smuggle me in? Whoa! That, uh, that's kind of... That's a little bit extreme, isn't it? I haven't even spoken with Hanu. <laughs> it's like I learned I'm going to marry this guy about, oh, five minutes ago. I guess I'm just going to start a new life in the city. Jeez. Yeah, let, let's slow down. Switch to a lower gear. Put on the brakes. Hmm. Something to read or perhaps get some trade going. Eh, I like books. Got anything to read? I don't traffic in books. The only things I've got are my own treatises. God, is that how you pronounce that? I know it's treatise, but... Treatises? Treatises? No, it's gotta be treatises, right? I don't know, it's a weird word. Um, I've already read these and don't know if I could stomach a second reading. Oh, thanks. I'm not sure I could've afforded these otherwise. Okay, well, I can just do the other things anyway, so... My father is a toy maker. Perhaps you'd like to buy some to sell in the city? I'll need to see one myself. Okay, I'll go get one. I mean, I've got the crude one on me, of course, but... Well, it's crude. And it's not for selling. Your father is carving something from a block of... Bobab? Bobab. I don't know if it's pronounced that way, but it's fun to say Bobab. Bobab. And seems engrossed in his work. Hmm? The Naga merchant down by the road seemed interested in your toys. Can I take one of these to show him? Oh, I see. One of these uh, one of those should do then. He motions distractedly towards a small table. You take a small wooden camel from the table. 
is best piece so far in your opinion. Let's take a look at it. Ah, very pretty. You know, so far all of these options seem very benign. But given the horrible things that happened during the last kind of set piece, if you will, I, I can only imagine what's going to happen. Like, I'm going to sell the Naga Merchant some toys, and then, like, villagers are going to see the toys and think that they're, like, voodoo dolls and black magic, and then they're going to, like, burn the Naga Merchant as a witch or something. It's going to be horrible, whatever happens. I have a toy to show you. This is exceptional craftsmanship. Has your father considered selling these in the city? He could make a handsome profit. He can't just go to the city. He's peasant caste. He's got to stay here and work the land. Then your father's gifts are wasted here. Tell me where he is, and I'll buy as many as he's got on him. I regret that I won't be back here for many months. Okay, wow. Just did some, uh... Just got a lot of, uh, drummed up a lot of business for us. Let's, uh, not ask to be smuggled in yet, so let's just continue on our way. There is... Mm, I kind of want to pronounce his name Deer, but it's probably Deheer. Okay, who are you? The local buyer and seller of goods, he does a little trade between the city and the village. You're not sure what the circumstances of his birth were, but you know he did fight in a war a few decades ago. Hey, Tanya. Getting ready for the wedding? Uh... Just loitering. <laughs> and there's the end of the conversation. Goodbye. Uh, let's try that again. How have you been lately? Can't complain. No money, not a lot of food. But at least things are peaceful. Nothing more important than that. Uh, actually there are more important things than that. Food being among them. I would much rather be not peaceful and violent and be alive with food than be peaceful but starving to death. <laughs> Can't complain, no money, not a lot of food. You have very low standards. That is depressing. Don't see you around much. Your family's pretty frugal. Any chances you're here to throw a little custom my way? Looking for travel supplies. Wow, can I really just go to the city? Like, I'm assuming these are travel supplies to escape. Well, let's not do anything of the sort yet. Uh, no, not right now. Perhaps later. I still haven't even spoken to Hanu. Hmm. There's a stranger over there. I think he's reading something. Aunt. Your aunt is a willful, lively woman with very strong opinions. She has grown to love your uncle, but they disagree frequently. You know, I love your uncle dearly, but one of these days he's gonna make me whack him upside the head with a shovel. You know what he's been telling me? He's been telling me we shouldn't go to Laxmi's people and get the food we need for your wedding feast. Like we're going to celebrate your new life with some gourd rinds and soggy rice. Don't you worry, Tanya. He's got another thing coming. Hmm. Well, I kind of want to tell her don't bother because I'm thinking it's more and more likely I'm going to be smuggling myself into the city. 
I guess I'm not smuggling myself. I guess the Naga merchant would be smuggling me. Can you smuggle yourself? Is that even a thing? That doesn't sound possible. Hmm. I'm, I'm just gonna go along with it. She has very strong opinions, so I'm probably not gonna get her to change hers. She wants to uh, make it a big party, then uh, go for it. I'm glad to see you care so much. Of course I do. It's not every day you get married. If Laxmi can't even give us what we need for once-in-a-lifetime days like this, right in harvest season, no less, then frankly, what good is she? It's never been a problem before. Hmm. These are some very interesting options, actually. I mean, I do agree it's irresponsible to be giving out extra food when there's a food shortage and people are starving. Like, that's just not a good idea. That's just not good. It's not right. Uh, so it's not just because it's my wedding, it's a matter of our rights? That's interesting. Hmm. Even if she would let us draw from the stockpiles, maybe it'd be wiser not to. Hmm. Let's go with that one. Yes, but even if she would let us draw from the stockpiles, maybe it'd be wiser not to. Tanya, the monsoons are well over a year late. They're going to come back any day now, and people around here are going to feel real stupid for walking around acting like the world was about to end. This drought is hard, and it's horrible, and it will probably claim a few lives inside the city before we're all said and done. But it will pass. And if we don't go on as we always have done, we're setting ourselves up to be trampled on even more than we were before. Given that Laxmi seems to be a bit of a dangerous person, I don't really want to involve anyone with her. I want to tell her just to don't. Just don't. Hmm. Do I want to... You know, do I want to kind of confront Laxmi? To a certain degree? Exercise our rights? I do have a feeling she's kind of trampling over people. Okay, let's... Yeah, let's let's challenge Laxmi. Let's get the extra food. Even though I don't think it's a good idea, I, I kind of want to do it just because I, I think she should be challenged. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, you really think things will return to normal soon? I know they will. There will be a time of healing, certainly. But things will return to normal. You don't think Behemoth had bad years before? I don't know. Maybe never like this. Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. Believe me. I know exactly what I'm doing. Okay. See if I can talk to the stranger. Hmm? Oh, sorry, did you want something? Uh, hey, I'm Tanya. You're the girl who's getting married, aren't you? Congratulations. I'm sure you'll be deliriously happy. Deliriously happy. Um, yeah. I, w I really want to be just... I really want to say this. I just want to be bitter about it. <laughs> but I kind of want to collect information about Hanu. Uh, so let's do that. So have you met my betrothed? I don't know much of anyone. People have been giving me a good bit of distance. You do know I'm from a farm that took up arms, don't you? Right, the farms are in resistance. Or they're in um, uh, rebellion, right? Everybody but ours. So... Ah, so nobody wants to associate with him. Because then they'll kind of be seen to be... 
maybe housing rebellious thoughts or something? Well, I didn't, but that kind of makes me want to talk to you more. <laughs> you want to hear about it? I do. It's just as though one day, without any prior planning, people started throwing things and burning down fences. Which wouldn't have been so bad, except they didn't count on the family running the farms to respond in kind. It was an ugly, stupid, badly handled mess on every level. Your mistress Laxmi had the whole place emptied out before too many people were arrested and tortured to death. I think she took custody of people on both sides of the violence. Once she'd painstakingly identified the masterminds. I had no idea it was that bad out there. Enough about all that. Anyway, what's with you? You seem a little subdued for someone days away from marital bliss. Hmm, there's a lot of options here. <laughs> the way I see it, this is just this is just one more chore I need to get done. Dig a ditch, bring in water, marry an undesirable clod of dirt for the rest of my life. God, that is depressing. I'd rather not marry him at all if I can manage it. Well, I suppose, in theory. One could steal a horse from the stables, at midnight. One could do so when one heard chattering near the manor, because that's when the guards on the outer patrol are crossing paths and idling. One could then ride west until one saw the road to Texila, Texila, at which point one finds some students or merchants and blends in. Which, equally technically, would be easier if one managed to steal, steal some money or trade goods before one went. Hold on... That's a lot to take in. Okay. Chattering near the manor. Maybe I should write this down. I don't know if it actually matters. It might just show up in my quest log or something, but chattering near the manor. Okay. That's when the guards are idling. Steal a horse. Go to Taxila. I would need to steal some money or trade goods before I went. Okay, there's trade goods with the Naga Merchant and with that guy. God, I don't want to steal, though. I really don't want to steal. Hmm. You seem to have thought this out. Indeed, he has. Very strange that he just had that information kind of handy. Not that I'm complaining. He is helping me, after all. Well, what about a solution that allowed me to remain in the village? Picky picky. I don't know. If I had to guess, I'd say there's probably something you can exploit in the local social politics. Does Hanu have a brother? Sister? Anyone who doesn't hate you and might be able to give you some leverage? Oh, he has a sister. Yeah. Nalaya. Not a bad idea. Thanks. Don't mention it. S seriously, don't ever mention it. In fact, whatever you do, just keep walking without another word. Okay. <laughs> yeah, some, uh... Very dangerous things he just said. Could probably get him put to death or something. Harish. Harish? Why don't you show up on the map? Who are you, Harish? Are you some sort of a vampire? You don't show up in mirrors or maps? An earnest, hard-working man, proud of his large family. That's a short description. Tanya, you read all sorts of things. I know you do. I've seen you go at it. What do you know of medicine? Uh... I know enough to know Rada's cures aren't good for much, but besides that... No, what was I thinking? Of course you can't help me. You're just a girl. You're useless. I'm useless. Laxmi is useless. Harish, calm down and tell me what's wrong. My son is dying. 
I've watched him die for almost a week. Helpless. Hopeless. Knowing that Laxmi keeps the best doctor in Bahimra in her home not a hundred feet away. My son is shriveling and sweating his life away, and I can do... nothing. Holy crap. Has he tried talking to the doctor? Is the doctor is the doctor that much of a piece of shit that he wouldn't even help someone in need? In a life life or death situation? Accusatory. I don't want to I don't want to accuse him. I just want to tell him to go do that. Not to accuse him of not having done that. For all I know, he's tried. Maybe he's already tried. So, do I want to tell him to go to the doctor directly, or go to Laxmi? Maybe the doctor won't do anything unless Laxmi tells him to. On the other hand, maybe the doctor has some sort of... You know, code of ethics and will actually help someone who's fucking dying? Ugh. Okay, um... God, that's really hard. <laughs> Which one do I do? You know, I want to tell him to go talk to the doctor, but it's actually listed as accusatory, which is not what I want to do, and this one is listed as thoughtful. So, let's go with this. Maybe if you threw yourself at Laxmi's feet, she might help you? And why would she? The only reason that evil woman has her power in the first place is that life doesn't concern her. She has a stone for a heart, and poison for blood, and she keeps her servants on a tight rein. I daren't even speak to the doctor. I fear what Laxmi would do to my family. Have you heard of the man who gives away medicine in the city? You know, fuck this Laxmi. I mean, seriously, fuck her. Look at the situation we're in. This man has a dying son. And he's afraid to even go ask her for help from her own private doctor. That is fucked up. It's all down to fate now. No, 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 no. <sighs> Gives away medicine in the city, but how is he going to get into the city? He's a peasant, he can't just walk in. Okay, do I put myself on the line, or do I put his life on the line. I don't know, but this one's listed as defiant and this one is thoughtful, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna go thoughtful. Have you heard of the man who gives away medicine in the city? He gives away medicine? To peasants? Why? Are you certain of this? There are some people in the city who hate him. I can't promise he's a good man. If there's even a chance this will help my son, I've got to take it. I'll travel into the city tonight and be back before Laxmi knows I've gone. Thank you, Tanya. Any hope at all is better than none. Oh, Jesus, I probably just got him killed. What have I done? <laughs>